In this video, we're going to show you how to change your valve cover gasket and your oil control valve gasket on a 2014 Mazda 6. The same applies to uh, CX-5 engines as well. In order to gain access to the top of the valve covers, we will have to remove this cover. Uh, basically, you pry on the four corners of the cover, which will release the cover. We go ahead and remove the cover. The next steps that we would do is that we will have to unplug the coils, then remove the 8mm screw bolts that hold the coil in place, remove each of the coils. The next thing that we will do is we will remove this hose right here and then we will remove this hose and then we will come in here and remove this connector that holds this hose in place so that we can lift this hose out of the way we will then next disconnect the oil uh, control valve right here we will unhook this connector here that holds this uh, wiring harness along with the connection here. Once we've been able to do that then we will move the harness out of the way, the pipes out of the way, and then we will have access to the top of the valve cover so we can get started on removing the bolts that hold it in place. So let me get started with the rest of the items before we get to the bolts on the valve cover. So when we're trying to, re to release these two clips uh, what you want to do is is you want to push from here from the side you want to push in on this nib and once you do that you're able to lift it up and this side of the clip will come out so just grab a piece of plier and squeeze it in and then lift it out and then this side will come out as well similarly on this side the orientation of this clip is in the same direction so you're able to sit fit in a flat head screwdriver and you what you do is, is you push this way in order to squeeze that side in order to squeeze that side of the clip in lift up and then this side will come out as well it may twist outwards but just push it back up and you should be good just wanted to show you how to get these two clips out. After, after having removed this uh, hose, you move this out of the way, you undo this clip, undo this clip and push the hose up. We're going to push the hose through here and we will move it out of the way. So this pretty much clears everything from the top of the valve cover. The next thing we're going to do is, is remove this and then we will start undoing these bolts. So now that we've got everything removed we're going to go ahead and start removing this with a 12 millimeter socket. So we're going to do this, this, all these bolts across the front, then here top, bottom, and then on the back side. In addition to the screws or bolts that are around the perimeter, there is this one here and this one here also that needs to get removed. But then also to gain access to this bolt right here, we're gonna have to undo this eight millimeter uh, bolt in here so we can unhook this, move this out of the way so that we can drop the uh, ratchet or impact gun right above that. So right now, uh, after having removed these bolts, uh, this unit is not coming off uh, very easily. Uh, it is still stuck. So what I did is, is uh, you wanna be gentle with this thing. And so I took a rubber mallet and I pretty much hit it along all these flat surfaces uh, as much as I could hitting it along these sides, hitting it this way, and then hitting it in this direction, and then trying to tap it uh, over here, 
um, just systematically going around. Uh, after that, um, I took a flathead screwdriver, and probably what's better is to use a uh, putty knife. Uh, it's it's a wider blade, uh, so it's not as small. And so, um, just trying to uh, trying to put it in between here and just trying to lift lift the uh, the valve cover and so um, I just went around gently because you don't want to ruin the surface of the uh, the valve cover uh, the you don't want to ruin the surface on which the rubber seal goes so you want to be careful on trying to pry this and so what I did is as I was you know trying to pry the different areas I am just moving in the areas that it's kind of restricted and so I've been able to kind of release the front end of this and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the same thing all the way I'm going to repeat the same thing all the way around and then on the other side uh, the goal here is and this is plastic uh, we want to be as gentle as possible and we do not want to ruin the uh, the surface on here so use a putty knife and take your time uh, there's no there's you're gonna save a lot more time and money if you make sure you take the time to remove this gently and not crack this so I'm gonna continue and once I've got it broken free then I'll show you how I've been able to pull this off Okay, so I had to bend this clip a little outwards, but you want to be really careful because it started bending at the tight corner and you may end up breaking it. So I did bend it a little that way. Uh, what it does is it allows me to be able to lift it, lift upwards. So while I'm able to lift up and shift it backwards, because what happens is this uh, this circle and the front face of this uh, valve, uh, control valve uh, plug, it allows you about a quarter inch to go backwards. And when, and once you're able to do that, then this front corner clears this metal clip. So just basically lift it up, go backwards, twist it towards you, and then slowly you can wedge it clear of the front and also we'll be able to clear the valve in the back and then this whole thing can come off We almost have it. That's it, basically. And there we go. The cover is off. And we've exposed the valves. So this is what it looks like from behind. The, the gasket has been left on the valves itself, the, the weld heads. And so here's the, 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 the gasket itself. And let me show you a little close up of the backside. So this is what the backside looks like. And it's kind of evident if you were to touch this um, that this is on the car pretty hard. Even the corners that have the RTV are not leaking. What's happening is, is the oil is going up the gasket in the crack, in the canal that's in the, uh, in the groove that's in the valve cover itself uh, and going out and over the other side of the, of the gasket. So the part that's leaking is not up against the engine because as you can see this is pretty much stuck on the car uh, there are some areas where 
it is loose so some oil may be getting out from underneath but uh, but you can see that this is by far the area where the most of the oil is leaking from and you can see the kind of mess it ends up making all over the place so once we get this uh, gasket removed um, I'm gonna go ahead and be extremely careful when we clean this because we do not want any of this dust going into the engine and so before I remove the valve uh, the before I move remove the this gasket I'm gonna go around with a cloth and brake cleaner fluid and I'm gonna clean the exterior or the perimeter dirt off and once I'm done that that is when I'll actually try to remove the uh, the, the rubber gasket material and then I'll show you how I'm gonna protect the top and then clean the other areas that are outside of the, uh, the valve body. So I've got the valve cover gasket removed. Uh, you do notice that we will have to apply some gray RTV at this location. We will need some gray RTV at that location right there. And then we will need gray RTV over this hump. So on both sides. So now we're just going to go ahead and clean up the surface all the way around. You want to make sure that you do not drop anything into the engine. So everything should be going towards the outside. So I've got quite a bit of dust because I've had uh, this oil leak for some time. So we're going to go ahead and clean up the surfaces, clean away from the engine so that nothing drops inwards. I wanted to show you how I'm removing the RTV, um, basically ending up having to use a razor blade to remove the RTV. So you'll have to do a few passes, but you want to make sure, like I said, nothing falls inside the engine. So when we do get to the uh, corner places, uh, that curved area, it is going to be a little bit more tedious. It takes a little bit of time, but uh, you do not want to uh, set any scratches into the surface, so just take your time when doing this process. So what we're going to do next is to remove the gasket right here. I already started pushing it through. Oh, so basically it falls through. And when you are going to be installing the new one, you end up pushing it through from the back side. So our next step is going to be to clean this up. And then what we're going to do is, is we're going to make sure that the outer surfaces and then the tracks all the way around are clean. So that's going to be the next step. So we're going to go ahead now and reinstall the new uh, rubber gasket in here and we're going to go ahead and install the gasket on the cover itself. Part number for the gasket, for the valve cover gasket is going to be your PY01-10-235 and then the PEO01-10-2D5 for the rubber grommet that fits in to this hole right here. So let's get this started. One thing why I wanted to point out while you're installing the gasket is, is this is preformed, so the shapes match. So when you do is, is when you want to get to the corners, you want to make sure you put the corner in. When you get to the curve right here, you want to make sure you pull this and have it installed in the area where it needs to be. So all of these things uh, fit in just perfectly fine. You just want to make sure you grab the gasket portion that is meant to be where it's supposed to be. Everything is formed, so it's very easy to install and place correctly. So, so we've got the gasket almost done here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing pushed in, and we are now going to install the oil control valve gasket. Now that I've got the uh, gasket in here, what you want to do is make sure it's properly seated. So what you do is grab one of the larger sockets that you have, place it on top of it, and then we're just going to go ahead and hammer it down. So it's best done if you're using two hands. Can you please grab this for me? That's it. Basically, 
this just ensures that the gasket gets seated correctly. And now I've got the head gasket uh, installed. We've got the new grommet installed. So we're pretty much ready to get this thing installed into the vehicle. I've got the top of the cylinder head cleaned up. Everything is, all the marks have been cleaned off. All the RTV has been removed. We ended up uh, using the abrasive pad uh, from one of the dishwashing things. Um, it actually did a fantastic job at removing all of the oil marks and everything. Uh, use the blade for the RTV. Just had to be extremely careful and take your time. These are aluminum heads, so you do not want to scratch anything. So all of the surfaces have been cleaned up. Um, you want to spend as much time as possible get the corners cleaned out. And now we're going to go ahead and start applying the RTV. We're going to be applying the RTV at this location. And the purpose why you're adding the RTV is, is because there's going to be uneven areas that need to make sure that the rubber gasket that you are providing uh, does not leave gaps. And so this is one area because you have the front part of the assembly that's connecting to the heads. So there is a vertical discontinuity. And so there is a slight step between here. So that's why the RTV gets applied here on the front side and the back side. Again, it's the two, two surfaces mating. And then the RTV is applied to uh, both sides of the curve and you can apply it all the way up and around the curve as well. And that's again because you have an abrupt change in surface at those two locations. And so what ends up happening is once you put the uh, silicone, when, once you put the gasket in the cover, you'll notice that it isn't going to sit right exactly at the two corners. And so uh, that is why you apply the RTV at, at this location as well. So the RTV was only in the two corners and about a half an inch up the side. But we're going to go ahead and uh, apply it all the way across the top as well. So I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I'm done. This is the gray RTV that we are going to be using for uh, the cylinder heads. So this is by Mazda. I might as well just use their part number. It's uh, triple, uh, quadruple zero seven seven one two one seven es This is the high temperature stuff. So might as well uh, use this. It's the same price. Again, when you, I'll show you at the end where I bought my parts from, but uh, for that same price, you can get other brands. Uh, might as well just use the Mazda parts. I've got the RTV applied. It's about an eighth inch tall. I've applied it to this side. I've applied it to here. I've got too too much light right there. That's in focus. And then I have applied it here. You can see it's on this side and right there. So we're now going to go ahead and get our valve cover into position. But then you just want to make sure that you do not touch any of that RTV. So getting it over this is going to be a little tricky but we've got to make sure that it does not touch on either end. With the cover installed we went ahead and uh, tightened the bolts down to when they stopped and we used the uh, numbering scheme. We followed the uh, numbering uh, that was on line that I found uh, in the service manual. I'll share that with you uh, after this video clip. Uh, after having done that, then we used a torque wrench and we tightened to 40 to 61 pound feet, uh, uh, pound inches, not feet. Uh, that would be approximately a maximum of five pound feet. Uh, we used a, uh, a torque wrench for that. Again, you follow the sequence uh, that is provided and I'll share that with the diagram. The primary process is to do the middle and then work your way outwards. So you do the middle, then you'll do one side, then one side, then the other side, and then thing, moving from one corner to the other. So it'll be pretty clear to you as soon as I share that screenshot with you.
Next, we're just going to go ahead and start re reinstalling the coils uh, over the spark plugs. You want to push this down firmly and then get the screws tightened in. And then once that is done, we're going to install the rest of them and then we're going to go in and uh, tighten the, uh, the bolts on top. We're going to repeat the same process for the remaining three spark plugs. Once the coils have been secured, we're going to connect them to the electrical connectors. Next thing is to reconnect the two hoses that we removed that are marked with the purple orange, the purple arrows. Then we're going to reconnect the plastic uh, connector that is marked blue. We're going to plug in the uh, oil pressure sensor connector marked in red arrow. And then we're going to pull the wiring harness and pin it back to its location at the two yellow marks. I've put about 1500 miles or more on the vehicle since we did the valve covers and everything looks perfectly clean. The RTV area is not leaking. The whole area looks pretty much clean. Even the back side looks clean. And we'll look at the other side. The area over the, the, the camshaft is clean as well. And we do not have any signs of any oil leaks. This concludes this repair. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch through this video. I hope that this will be useful to you when you do this repair. If you have any questions, please ask me down below and I will try to do my best to reply them in a timely fashion. Or if you've got any other suggestions that somebody else can use. Please help me out by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel.